Hey Lightroom users, Mike Wardinsky here, and today I'm gonna make your life easier by showing you a couple of key commands that you can use in Lightroom to speed up your workflow. But before we get there, don't forget to head over to naturemike.com for in-person workshops, private tutorials, and some great how-to articles and reviews. Okay, so let's dive in. Now I know some people don't like to use key commands because they have trouble remembering them, but hear me out here. You don't need to learn them all at the same time. You can just learn a few and then you can branch out. And if you use Lightroom enough, you'll start to remember them. So to start off, if you only wanna learn three key commands, here they are. It's D, E, and G. The D key will toggle the develop module so you don't have to come up to the right hand corner every time you wanna switch between the library and the develop. The G key stands for grid, will toggle the grid view. And lastly, the E key, it's a little bit tricky, uh, stands for loop. And if we hit that, that'll take us into the loop view within the library. So those three keys are gonna easily allow you to bounce around in Lightroom without having to constantly go up to the right hand side here. Okay, so that wasn't too bad. Now let's try three more that are pretty easy to remember because the letter stands for what they actually do. So we have the I key. If we hit that, that's gonna show us our information up in the top left corner of the screen. And if we hit it once more, it's gonna to toggle through the metadata. So now we're seeing our shooting data, 1 30th of a second, F16, ISO 100. And if I hit it once more, it disappears completely. Next, we have the F key, which is going to enter into full screen mode. Press it once more, and we go back to our normal view. And lastly, we have the T key. This one's important because it's easy to accidentally hit. And the T key stands for toolbars. And so when I hit that, it toggles the toolbar off and back on. So again, I for info, F for full screen, and T for toolbar. Next, we have the space bar. And the space bar is the keyboard shortcut for zooming. So if I just hit that, I zoom in, hit it again, I zoom out. Now watch what happens in the navigator when I hit that space bar. Right now it's going to 100%, but if I were to click over here and go to 400% and then hit the space bar, I then go in between 400 and fitting normal. So Lightroom automatically toggles to the last zoom view you have selected. And I'm gonna go back to 100% because that's typically where I like to be. And I can hit space and we're back to fit. Moving along, let's talk about ratings and color labels. For a better visual, I'm gonna bounce over to the grid view by hitting the G key. And now you can see we have the option to give the star rating or a color label down here in the toolbar, but we can use keyboard shortcuts instead of having to go back and forth between the photo and the toolbar. And these keyboard shortcuts are pretty easy to remember. The star rating system is zero for no star. You can see my star just turned off. If I hit the one key, that's one star. Two is two, three, four, and five. Next, we have our color labels. And we're just gonna continue right down the keyboard number pad from six to nine. Six is red, seven is yellow, eight is green, and nine is blue. And sorry if you like purple, you will have to come down here and click it. There is no keyboard shortcut for purple. If you'd like to use pick flags in Lightroom, there's keyboard shortcuts for those too. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that image we were initially tagging. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit the P key, P for pick flag, or the X key for a reject. Kind of think of X as no good. That's the keyboard shortcut for a reject. If you decide you wanna get rid of your reject or pick flag, just remove all flags in general, hit the U key, and that will remove all pick and reject flags on any selected photos. If you'd like to use quick collections in Lightroom, we've got a keyboard shortcut for that too. So anytime you select a photo in Lightroom and hit the B key, that automatically adds that photo to a quick collection. And so I'm gonna go ahead and select a couple of these horse photos. I'm holding command so I can select multiple at a time. That would be control on a PC. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the B key. And you can see this little circle highlights letting me know it's been added to a quick collection. And when I click on the quick collection, I can see all of the photos together. Now, if I were just to click on a single photo and hit the B key, that will remove it from the quick collection. Quick collections are great for when you wanna temporarily store a bunch of photos together that might not be related or are in different folders and you only need them in that collection temporarily. Say maybe you're exporting a couple of photos for your website or maybe to a client. 
Maybe you want to add them to a quick collection instead of moving them into a separate folder or even just a regular collection. If I wanted to get rid of all these photos, all I have to do is hit Command A, that'd be Control A on a PC, and that will select all of the photos, and then I can just hit the B key and they'll all disappear. Alternatively, I could do Command Shift B or Control Shift B on a PC, and that would clear the entire quick collection. Depending on your workflow, you may or may not need to use the rotation controls, but if you do, there's shortcuts. Command left bracket will rotate to the left, and command right bracket will rotate to the right. These key commands also work in the loop and develop view as well. If I hit E and command left bracket, we can rotate, and if I hit D to the develop module, command right bracket, and there we go. Moving on, let's talk about develop module shortcuts. I'm gonna start with a couple of tool shortcuts first. If I hit the R key, it doesn't matter if I'm in the library or the develop module, watch what happens. Lightroom automatically switches to the develop module and opens up the crop tool. I can then hit the O key to cycle through different crop overlays. Remember O for overlay. And I can also hit the H key to hide and show the overlay. So if you ever open up the crop tool and don't see the overlay, hit the H key. To get out of the crop tool, I'll just hit the R key again. Continuing with the H key, it will also hide and show pinned when using the masking tools. If I hit H, you can see they disappear. If I hit it again, they show back up. If I hit the O key, that will hide and show my masking overlays. While we're on the topic of masking and local adjustments, there's a few keyboard shortcuts for those as well. The M key will give us the linear gradient. Shift plus M will give us a radial gradient tool. And the K key will give us the brush tool. If you'd like to change the size of the brush, you can easily do so by hitting the left bracket key to shrink it and the right bracket key to increase the size. If you hold shift, and the bracket keys, you can adjust the size of the brush feather. Left will make it smaller, and the right bracket key will make it larger. If you find yourself converting a lot of color images to black and white, or if you ever just wonder what an image would look like in black and white, there's a really easy way to find out, and that is to hit the V key, and that will toggle into black and white, and you hit it again, and it toggles back to color. Another great tool shortcut in Lightroom is the spot removal tool. And this one's a little bit harder to remember. It's the Q key. And as you just saw, even though I was in the grid view in the library module, when I hit the Q key, I automatically snapped over to the develop module and the spot removal tool has been selected. If I wanna get out of that view, I can go ahead and hit Q again. And we're just back into the regular develop module view. If you've been editing an image for a little while, sometimes it's nice to look at the original to have a reference point. And if you'd like to do that, go ahead and hit the backslash key and that will show you the before version. If you'd like to get back out, just hit the backslash key once more, and that'll take you back to your current version. If you'd like to see a side-by-side -side before and after comparison while in the develop module, hit the Y key, and that'll show you the original and where you are with the current edit. And you can switch these back and forth by hitting this button down here. To get out, just hit the Y key once more. Another helpful key command that will work in the develop or the library is the L key, and that's the lights out keyboard shortcut. So remember L for lights. If I hit that, you can see the outside of the screen kind of gets a little darker, and I can actually still continue to process this image if I wanted to in this mode. If I hit the L one more time, the outside completely turns to black allowing you just to see the image while removing all the outside distractions of the controls. And if I wanna go back to my normal view, I'll just hit the L key one more time. And last but not least, one of the best key commands in Lightroom, because let's face it, it can be hard to remember all of these at one time, command question mark will actually show you a list of keyboard shortcuts within Lightroom. Now you can see I'm in the library module, and so this is showing me the library shortcuts. To get out of this, all I have to do is click on it. And if I go to the develop module, remember the D key is the shortcut for that, and I hit command question mark, I'll get a list of develop module keyboard shortcuts. And again, to click out, I'll just click the dialog box. Now I didn't cover all of the keyboard shortcuts in Lightroom, but I did cover some of my favorites and some of the most useful ones. In addition to this video, I've also placed a list of keyboard shortcuts in the description of this video so you can use them for future reference. 
And I'm curious, did I leave out a keyboard shortcut that you'd like to use? If so, feel free to post it down below in the comments of this video. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. And of course, don't forget to check out naturemike.com for some great articles, in-field workshops, private lessons, and much more. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will be seeing you around the corner in my next video.